the areas that we can relate to. And the three areas are one, the sick and the afflicted, two, grief, and three, prodigals. And so these are areas that all of us can relate to. And I want us to pay attention as we talk about this. Of course, when I looked up the word prodigal, you know what it says? It says someone who spends money or uses resources freely and recklessly. And so when I look at the biblical account in Luke 55 with the prodigal son, and we, know all, we all know that story very well, I say that we will have to look at how we have to see the prodigal son wasting God's resources of time and talent and money and all that God has endowed upon us because we're taking it home to ourselves. So we are misusing all of the things that God has you know, entrusted in our care. But when I look at the story, I said, what a merciful God with all of what the prodigal son did. And of course, that can relate to each of us. God in his mercy beckoned him to arise, right? And to come home. He had to know in his consciousness that he had to arise. And so what he did, he arised, he put out the old man, he went to God, he confessed, and we know the story. So we're going to talk this afternoon about those three areas, the sick and the afflicted, the grief, are grieving, and also the prodigals. So let's talk a little about the sick and the afflicted. And this is nothing new to us because daily we talk about these things, we experience these things. But you know, the word of God asks in James 5 and verse 14, who is sick among you? And of course, if I should ask for a show of hands, I'm certain some hands would be going up. Who is sick among you? Well, many of us have experienced sickness and we have been afflicted with one disease or another. But thank God, on the other hand, many of us have also experienced the healing touch of God. And we could take all day into tomorrow to share our individual experiences. But all of us here today can testify that God has heard and has answered many prayers. True, Bedrin? Sometimes the answer to a prayer might not have been an immediate yes, but it might have been yes, but wait. And you felt like the wait was too long and you felt abandoned by God and you begin to question all sorts of things and you felt discouraged. Or it could have been that the answer to your prayer was no, but we are certain that God hears and answers. All of us have these common experiences. So it's not, you know, to any particular person. We all have these common experiences. But one thing we want to know and be certain of is God hears and he answers prayers. So we might have prayed and received answers that we did not like. And many times I hear persons talking about they have been praying for things for years and God not answered in prayer. God answered. God answered. It's either he said yes, but wait. He said no. Or he said yes. But God answers a prayer. And there is a certainty as presented in the word of God, that whenever we petition his throne, he hears and he answers our prayers. Now, there are many biblical references that tell us that God hears and answers our prayers. And I'll share just one with you. In 1 John 5, verse 14 and 15, it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. I hope we didn't jump over the point where it said his will, according to his will. So God hears our prayers and he answers. Now, there are many biblical accounts of how Jesus healed the sick, whether it is mental or physical. But we have read of Jesus healing the sick and coming home closer to us. We have witnessed healing in the lives of our family members, our brethren our co-workers, our neighbors, and in our own lives. Many of us have been healed of one illness or another, and we can testify that healing came when we prayed because God heard and he answered. So there's no question that God hears and he answers prayers. We have been healed by answered prayers, brethren. And of course, we can testify of that. Now, many times we question our relationship with God and whether our faith is strong enough. I hear brethren say that maybe them, them faith too weak, are the faith strong enough? We question whether God's silence means he's absent. Many times we do that. But the Bible tells us that Paul, we know the story very, very well of Paul, that Paul prayed several times. But instead of being healed from whatever he was afflicted, Paul was assured that God's grace was sufficient for him. Now, the book of James 5 that asks the question, who among you is sick? 
also said that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. Now the Bible teaches that spiritual restoration or healing goes hand in hand with physical healing. So when we pray for physical healing, brethren, let us also pray for the spiritual restoration or spiritual healing, our spiritual wholeness, so that we not only are praying for the physical well-being or the physical healing, but also for our spiritual lives. Because remember the text talk about fearing the one, not fearing the one who can, what, harm the body, but the one who can harm both body and soul. So we want to make sure that we are also intact, our soul, we are praying and seeking for God's leading and healing in our spiritual lives. And so this afternoon, whoever is sick among us, whoever is afflicted, <clears throat> if we have been praying and we have not received the answer that we desire, don't be discouraged. God is not weary of appearing his children. Ask God to let his will be done in your situation. I mean it because many times when we pray and we say according to God's will, it just cuts on down at the end of the prayer. It not really, you know, you don't get the feel that it is really interwoven in the whole attitude and desire and um, belief. It is just cut on to the end. So when we say, when we ask God to do anything for us and let it, his will be done, we have to mean it. Then we can be confident that we are in good hands. And whatever God's will is for our life, then he will see us through. Now, exercising faith is also knowing that God's grace is sufficient for us and trusting that our creator God knows what is best for us. Now, at this time, we're going to be favored by a special from Sister Angelia Johnson. And of course, this will be followed by the Wilson sister who will be doing the great physician now is near. And then Pastor Bo will be doing the prayer for the sick and the afflicted. So we're going that order, Sister Angelia. Then we'll have the Wilson sister doing the great physician now is near. And then Pastor Bo will be praying for the sick and the afflicted. Questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong. I've been a lot of places and I've seen so but there have been times I felt so all alone. But in that lonely hour, in that precious lonely hour, Jesus let me know that I was still his own. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust.
Amen. Amen. The Wilson sisters. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon.
praying for us. Amen. Thank you for that powerful song. Let us pray. Eternal Father and our God, we bow in your presence, Lord. As we come, we are saying thanks. We're thanking you, God, for so many things. You have been such a wonderful God to us. Yes, Lord, we have had challenges and difficulties in our lives. But it's not because of you. It's because of the reality that we're living in a sinful world, a sin-cursed world. A matter of fact, if it were not for your grace and mercy, we would have been destroyed already Amen. by sin. Amen. And so, Lord, as we come, we are thanking you for your grace that has kept us alive. Yes. For your mercy, yes. O oh Lord, we are deserving of destruction. Yes. But your mercy says no. Amen. And you allow us, O oh Father, another day, another chance to come before you, to build our relationship with you, to be drawn closer to you, to get to know you better. We know, God, that you are a healer. Yes. And we know that there is nothing that you can't do. Amen. And what you have Amen. done for others, you will do for your people. Yes. And so we come now before your throne of grace and mercy. Yes. And ask, O oh Lord, that you remember your children everywhere. Remember yes. those who are afflicted by sickness, mental, physical, emotional, whatever the disease is, whatever the challenges are. O oh, great God of the universe, healer, savior, friend. Yes. We come yes. bowing before you this afternoon yes, and we Lord. claim your healing, oh God. We yes. claim your healing for every situation yes. because we know, yes. great God, that you are the God of the impossible. Things that seem Amen. impossible, things that men are confused about are clear before your eyes. You know, God, how to minister to each of your children. You know how to remove the headache, to remove the back pain, to remove the arthritis pain. You know, God, to remove the cancer cells. You know, oh God, to restore those who are afflicted by COVID-19. Oh great God, you know how to heal those who are having mental challenges. Great God, you know there's nothing to imp nothing impossible for you, nothing hard for you, oh God. And so we come now, God, in the name of Jesus, the one who loves us, the one who gave himself for us, the one who told us to come to you in his name, the one who has promised Amen. that he will take care Amen. of us. Oh, great God, we come yes. to you, our Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God, we're not squeezing Amen. mercy out of you because we know that you are Amen. merciful, God. And we are not telling you yes, how to work yes. because we do know, yeah. oh Lord, that you allow some things to take place in our lives that we will never understand in this life. Yes. But you have yes. said it in your words that you allow some things to take place in our lives because of your ultimate purpose in our lives. And so, great God, we're thanking you that you are not like man and you don't see the way we see. And so, Father, although we pray for healing, although we pray for restoration, although we pray, oh God, that you will come through mightily for your people so yes. that we all can see and testify and glorify and magnify your name. We Amen. still are praying, oh God, according to your will. Let yes. it be done according to your will, O oh God. But it doesn't matter what you choose to do. We pray that you will help us 
never to let go of you. Never Amen. to let go. Never to allow Amen. the devil to cause us Amen. to give up on you. Because we know, as Job would have said, that though you slay us, yet we will serve you. And we will say Amen. like the three Hebrew boys, our God can, but if our God chooses yes. not to, we're going to hold on to him to the end. Thank you again for everything Amen. as we continue to lift you up and magnify your name in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Want to thank the ladies who are sisters who ministered to us before. And thank you, Pastor Bo, for that powerful prayer. Now, brethren, what a time we're living in. Just to talk a little about our students, our young people. No one expected that formal schooling worldwide would come out of the brick and mortar space and be online or in the virtual space. Nobody expected that last year. But here we are as educators right now, wondering about some of the things that our young people might be learning when they are not actually online. Because you know the situation and you must have heard the conversation that not all of our students are actually tuning in online for classes. Some of them are not able to because of their various circumstances and some are choosing not to. But one thing we're certain, brethren, is that they are learning something. So they might not be in the formal situation learning, but wherever they are, they're learning something. And one of our concerns as educators is what it is that they're learning and what they're learning. Is this going to be of a positive impact on the world in their communities? Or is it going to be negative? Because the truth is many of them might be engaged in some things that otherwise they would not have been engaged in were they in the brick and mortar space. And so we know the challenges are many. Many of these young people are not necessarily being guided right now, being supervised by parents. And so a challenge is there. And so this evening, we have a concern for the young people. And I know many of our brethren have been praying for them. They have been seeking out some of them in their community, assisting them. I know that, but we want to make sure that we pray for them so that whatever it is that they're having the challenges right now, that as Christians, we can reach out to them. And also we know that God hears and answers prayer. So at this time, Sister Thompson is going to be praying, not only for the students or the children, but we want to pray for the educators too, because they too have been thrown into something new and many are struggling. But we want to pray for our young people, the children, and include the educators and the parents in our prayers. So we're going to ask Sister Sharon to pray for our young people, include the parents and the educators, because right now the struggle is great. So Sister Sharon. Yes, Sister Yvette, let us pray. O oh, kind Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your most holy name. We just want to thank you for your goodness towards us. You have provided so much for us. There are so many things that we are going to be thankful for. We are thankful, Lord, and we just want to let you know. This afternoon, we want to present before you the children of our church, from the cradle roll to the young adults. They are still our children, and we want to include all those who are in a school, in a formal setting, trying to acquire an education. We want to pray for the kindergarten, especially. Lord, they don't know what is happening around them. Their parents are now their teachers. So we pray for the parents that they may be patient, they may be kind, and they may be tolerant to these young ones, knowing that they need you more than any other time. We pray for the teachers who have to be thinking way ahead how to reach these young minds. And they are so distracted easily. Lord, we, want to have, we pray that you would have mercy upon them. Provide the necessary gadgets that they need to enhance their learning. We pray for the primary students also. So many of them are locked in. They are not even able to go on the streets because the predators are out there. And there are many things that they are, they are going to be lacking. How to socialize. But Lord, we know you are the on-time God. You know the beginning from the end. You know, all, you have all the solution for all these. Lord, for the secondary persons who will be moving on to examine, um, examinations, which will help to shape their 
future. We pray for the teachers, Lord, that they may be tolerant. And we pray that the necessary gadgets will be made available to facilitate their learning. Lord, for those who are tertiary level, which I know can be very challenging because there are so many things to learn at the same time. We pray that these teachers, the lecturers, the tutors will be considerate, knowing that they are just an individual and that they need to modify sometimes their assignments so that these students won't be depressed. Lord, we pray for those who are in need, who need different gadgets, both financially and equipment wise, we pray that you provide for them. These sometimes are so costly and the parents can't afford it. And we pray, Lord, that um, just as all you provided for the children of Israel, that when they get up in the morning, there's food there. Provided good Samaritans to provide them with these gadgets. We pray for children whose parents, they have, they have lost their jobs because of the pandemic. We pray that you would take care emotionally and finish financially for these young ones. Lord, we pray that these houses, their homes will be safe. We pray that their communities and their environment will be safe so that their learning can be facilitated. Lord, we pray for our government, the Ministry of Education, as they continuously make plans to facilitate these young minds. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon them. We pray, Lord, that the funding will be provided that these young ones can be facilitated. Lord, help that the parents, teachers, and as members and community members will realize that prayer is a solution for everything. All they need to do is to put everything into your hands and believe that will be, it will happen. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us and we pray, Lord, that you will hear our cry. You will know the end from the beginning. You are the great provider, so we leave everything in your care. Lord, we ask all these mercies. And we just want to extend our prayer to the worldwide. Students all over the world are having challenges with this new mode of learning. We pray again once more, Lord, for the teachers, because sometimes it is extremely challenging. So, Lord, we put everything before you, and we pray that as a church family that we will always lift up these young ones, the, their teachers, their parents, to you, so that their needs can be supplied according to your riches in glory. We ask all these mercies in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Thompson. All right, so we're going to Amen. be looking at... We're going to be looking at grieving persons, as I'd stated at the beginning. And again, welcome to those who are just joining us. All right, so we're going to do some more participation um, from the brethren. So we're going to ask again that three persons open their microphones. Of course, use the, the raise hand. And we are going to be responding to what has caused you grief. So that's the question. What has caused you grief? And we're going to allow three persons to open the microphone and share. And then we can have some comments in the chat. And I asked someone to monitor that. So what has caused you grief? So you can raise your hand and you will be acknowledged. What has caused you grief? Is it too personal a question? All right, so I see Brother Stephen Williams' hand. Uh, one of the things that would have caused or is causing grief is the very fact that we're not able to grieve the way we normally do when we have the loss of loved ones. And while it is not affecting me directly, there are families who I know personally who are grieving and not even able to express themselves. All right, thank you for sharing. Anybody else? All right, somebody in the chat said the loss of my loved ones, especially the tragically ones like my mother. Is it mother? All right, I see Brother Pearson's hand up. Go ahead, Elder Pearson. 
Yes, good evening. Um, one of the things that cause us grief, particularly in this time, is the fact that the crime and violence is getting so out of hand that even our ladies are being killed on a daily basis. And uh, as a result of that, it bring about uh, another level of fear right across the length and breadth of this country. So I believe that that is one of the things that is causing grief at this time. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much for sharing. Is there any, any, any other comments in the chat? Or anybody else would like to share using the microphone? Loss of loved ones on my backsliding children. The uncertainty of the pandemic. Yes, those are things will definitely cause us to grieve. All right, is there any other would like to share using the microphone? All right, so if we were able to talk a lot about grieving, I'm certain that my children turn from God. Yes, the backsliding children. Um, I know for sure that that is causing a lot of grief right across the length and breadth of those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior. It is really causing us to grieve, especially when we are witnessing and we think that they are not responding in the way we want them to. But I have learned that we should witness, we should pray, and we should leave the rest to God. All right, so thank you for sharing. Those who were able to share, thank you for sharing. And I hope it was not too personal a question. Now, I started out talking about our reasons for trusting others, right? And the Bible is all about relationship building. In the Garden of Eden, we see where our creator God communed with his creation. He visited with them in the cool of the day. We see in the Ten Commandments that the first four commandments relate to our relationship with God. And of course, the second six relate to our relationship with each other. So the Bible is all about relationship building. And so this tells us that building healthy relationships are very important, right? And so when relationships are broken, it causes grief. So whatever um, grief that we're thinking about, if we think long and hard enough about it, we realize that it is connected to a relationship because none of us live in isolation. So when you're grieving because of divorce or a separation from the one you were courting for some time, it's because of broken relationship. When you're grieving because of separation through, mig through migration, and I remember some time ago in the Caribbean that there was this phenomenon about barrel children. And this is where their parents had migrated abroad and the, the children would get the barrels with all sorts of goodies. But they were grieving children who were away because of separation through migration, away from their parents, and they were really grieving. We had them to deal with in schools. Where though they were getting the fancy sneakers and the bug and all the other gadgets that they would have liked to, to, to get and they get rather, they were grieving because there was separation between themselves and their parents. And I'm suspecting that wives and husbands would have been grieving in the same manner if one of the partners abroad and one is out here. So things like those separation through migration cause grieving. Persons can grieve also because of broken friendship. And of course, broken friendships might not be something that we talk a lot about, but many persons have experienced broken friendship and it has broken their hearts. They're grieving because of the broken friendship because usually that friendship is the support system or the friend is the sounding board. And so when you're no longer able to have that kind of quality relationship, then it is going to be um, cause for grief. And of course, surely death will cause us to grieve. Now, all of these and many more which cause us to grieve is due to the relationship which we have formed with others. Now, God knows about relationship building and he knows about grieving. When Mary, the sister of Lazarus, was weeping over the death of her brother, and we know that story very well. It can be found in John 11, verse 33. It says, therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. So Jesus knows about grief. So death caused Jesus to grief. So here it is that sin also brought grief to the heart of God. 
So God knows about relationship building. He knows about grieving. So these things that we're experiencing is not foreign to God. In Psalm 78 and verse 40, it says, how often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? So God knows about grieving. So nothing, as I said, that we're experiencing is foreign to God. So today, if you are grieving, brethren, God knows what you're going through and he wants to comfort you. God has given us the greatest assurance to hold on to during our time of grief. In Revelation 21 and verse 4, it says that in the earth made new, there will no longer be any death, mourning, or crying, or pain. And Isaiah said that the former things will not be remembered or come to mind. And I said, praise the Lord. Now, when my mom was sick before her death, there was a song that held special meaning for both of us and brought comfort to us. And it says, be not dismayed, whatever betide, God will take care of you. And so today I'm reminding us that whatever is happening in our lives, God will take care of us. Now at this time, Sister Holda Cunningham will minister to us in song. And of course, this will be followed by Sister Zoe McCoy, who will be praying for the grieving ones. So Sister Holda will minister to our hearts, and then we'll have Sister Zoe McCoy, who will be leading out in prayer for the grieving ones. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Jenny's got more months than she's got money. She works three jobs, she's barely getting by. Rob just heard his mom's been told it's cancer. So many questions, and all of them ask why. We're living in a broken world. A broken world won't give you any answers. Everything is upside down. Wrong is right and right is wrong, but not for long. No, not for long. This broken world is created by a savior. And nothing here can take him by surprise. Someday all this hurting will be over. And every tear will be wiped away and dry. But for now, we're living in a broken world. Not for long. No, not so Mama spends her waking hours praying. Her child has gone, left everything behind. Daddy's getting tired, his faith is fading. Can't get water from a well that's run dry. We're living in a broken world. A broken world won't give you any answers. Everything is upside down. Wrong is right, and right is wrong, but not for long. No, not for long. This broken world is created by a savior. And nothing here can take him by surprise. Someday all this hurting will be over. And every tear will be wiped away and dry. But for now, we're living in broken world. This broken world is crazy. 
little by Savior. As nothing can take him by surprise. Someday all oh, this hurting will be over. And every tear will be wiped away and dry. But for now, we're living in. Not for long. No, not for long. Oh, oh, oh. We're living in a broken world. Not for long. No, not for long. Amen. Can you hear me? Lord in the Father, let us pray. Lord in the Father, thank you for today. Lord, thank you for life. Lord, thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Lord, I come just now to pray for those who are grieving, those who, are experienced, who have experienced loss, some loss, whether it is the loss of a family, friend, a relative, whoever it may be. Lord, I'm asking you to be with them at this time. Lord, the greatest enemy to man is death, Lord. And we know that we will not see our family members and friends until you come. Lord, please help us to remain faithful until you come. Lord, please remove the sad hearts and bring joy and comfort. Be a comfort to them. Lord, please help me and others to know how to approach those who are grieving. Lord, please be with them continuously, Lord, because I know what it is to, to lose and to be without a loved one. Lord, over the corona period, over this period, Lord, I've seen so many people pass away, especially suddenly without, without anyone expecting. And Lord, that even makes the grieving process even more harder to bear. Lord, I'm asking you to be with them, Lord. Continue to encourage them, Lord. Lord, please help them to lean on your arms and to continue, trust, continue to trust in the blessed hope of your return. That is our only hope as a fallen human race. Lord, thank you for the greatness you have showed towards us. Thank you for your blessed Sabbath day. Lord, be with the church and those who are grieving, Lord, those who are sad, those who are aching because of loss. Lord, please help that we will not grieve as those without hope, Lord, because we know that we have, we have you to look up to and we have the hope of your return. Lord, this I ask and many other things, Lord. Please, Lord, whatever I fail to ask of you, Lord, Lord, fail not to grant it unto me and be with the church as a whole. In your name I pray. Amen. If it's you're not being heard, your mic is off. Are you hearing me now? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so I'm saying thank you, ladies. Thank you, sisters. And uh, indeed, someday all this hurting will be over. And that was the message in the song that Sister Olga just shared with us. And in John 16 and verse 20 tells us that our sorrow shall turn into joy and so at this time we're going to be having a song um, by the wilson sister i'm not certain if it is joy comes in the morning that they're going to be sharing with us so wilson sister will you go ahead i see brother bear's hand raised if it, that you want to brother Barry, your hand is raised yes my sister um I just want to say that in my lifetime, I've never seen so much death and suffering. I didn't know that in my short life, I would have seen so much death and suffering. But, you know, it is the plan of the enemy to make our hearts heavy and be grieving so much because 
everywhere you turn these days, it's grieving. If it's not, if it's not in your um, immediate family, it is somebody that you know that has um, as a grief or someone grieving, and this is what the devil is planning. But what we need to do as Christians, we know that we have this blessed hope. So in spite of all this grief, we should not be going around with heavy hearts, but our hearts should be towards heaven because the enemy knows that he has a short time. And as I said to someone quite recently, he is like a defeated foe. And you know, when you are in a fight, I know that you are already defeated. You put out all the effort to fight as much as, much as possible, but you're still defeated. So the enemy knows that he's a defeated foe and mm-hmm. all is pulling out all the stops to make us um, have these heavy hearts going around and grieving. We know we have to grieve, but we should not mm-hmm. grieve as those who do not have hope. But to Amen. trust in God, Amen. To, trust Amen. In God to mm-hmm. help us to make, to have heaven in sight, because mm-hmm. that is where our final destiny will be. So That's as right. traveler going through this land, may God help us to put mm-hmm. our faith and our trust in him, knowing that not long from now, we mm-hmm. will see him face to face and all of this, this grief, this suffering and this loss would have been mm-hmm. put away. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for sharing, brother. Um, we'll have the Wilson sisters. <clears throat> when Stephen was accused, lonely and bewildered, no one that day was sent by his side. He just looked up to the heavens and saw. Stephen, at the rising of my father, 
Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Wilson. Sister, beautiful Amen. song. Amen. 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 Definitely God will roll us over the tide. And we can all speak to the fact that sometimes we are caught in that roller coaster of tides. And it is God that we have to depend on to roll us over the tide. Um, so if you're just joining us, we want to welcome you. And we have looked at the sick and the afflicted. We did say that we were going to situate the conversation in three areas, the sick and the afflicted, the grieving, and the prodigals. And so we're going to talk a little about prodigals. And remember I said in the beginning that the word prodigal means waste of resources. And I indicated that we would picture this as waste of the resources that God has bestowed upon us, which could be our time, our talent, our finances, all that belongs to God. And of course, we are the stewards of the resources that God has placed in our care. So I want to ask the question, does anyone on this platform feel like a prodigal? And of course, persons are not going to be raising their hands for this because we don't necessarily like to admit to certain things because we're looking at one who misuses God's resources. All right, so there's a beautiful, profound biblical account of the prodigal son that Jesus told to his disciples. And of course, the Pharisees and others were also listening in. In fact, at that same meeting, where the tax collectors and sinners were gathered around to hear Jesus, he told his listeners three parables, one about the lost sheep, the other about the lost coin, and the other about the lost son, which of course is the one that is referred to as the prodigal son. And he did this because the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who were also gathered there, were muttering that this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. They were referring to Jesus, you know, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Well, aren't you glad that he welcomes sinners and eats with them, brethren? I'm happy because then you and I wouldn't be here right now praising God and looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ if he didn't mingle with sinners and if he didn't reach out to us and if he didn't give his life for us. So I'm grateful that he is one who welcomes sinners and mingles with them. All right, so this... Afternoon, I'm going to share briefly a personal story with you, or a personal experience with you, very briefly. The whole of it might not come out, but briefly, enough to capture what I'm saying. Because remember, we're looking at is prodigal. Now, I grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church, and my parents are Seventh-day Adventist Christians, and my brothers are Seventh-day Adventist Christians. And of course, those of us who grew up with several Adventist parents, we know that you have to be involved in everything that is happening in church. So you name it, I was involved. And I remember one particular experience I, I, I particularly liked was that um, we, were, we had designated readers for missionary story, uh, mission stories. And so there were about five of us girls who were designated. And so you could look forward to doing that. And I was involved in all other areas of the church. And I really liked it. I love God. I used to be getting up early to do the week of prayer, travel from where we were to get to church for five o'clock in the morning. And I really look forward to that. And I can remember one of my special songs that I'm always requesting is One Thing I Have the Lord Desire. That's a beautiful song, right? I used, I used to request that song a lot. So I'm laying the foundation for what I'm going to tell you about prodigal because I grew up in church. I know God. I love God. But here, the prodigal thing is not going to reveal itself. So I became a young adult. And of course, I started out the club life, wherever the fun and excitement is. I started out going out with my friends, having a good time in quotation. Of course, I wasn't thinking about it in quotation at that time. I'm having a good time. 
And so I'm always making plans for my weekend, what you're going to do Friday night, what you're going to wear, Saturday night, what you're going to wear, the same for Sunday night. And so I'm living it up and having a good time. One particular Friday evening, I was in a club. And of course, I'd gone there with my fiance. He's sitting at the bar with his friends drinking. And I'm down in the middle of the clubhouse, jigging up. I like to use that expression, jigging up and having a good time. And whilst I was there in the middle of that loudness and everything going on, I heard a voice say, Dean. So that's a name that my mom calls me, Dean. My friends didn't like Dean, so they started calling me Dino. I heard the voice said, Dean. So, you know, when persons call your name, your first response is to answer. So I said, yes. But when I looked around where I was dancing and I looked, I don't know anybody there. And there's nobody there who knows me either because my spouse was sitting at the bar with his friends. And I'm down there by myself dancing because I don't need anybody to dance with. I just want to dance. And as soon as I hear Pan I start dance. And so I was down there jigging up and going on the voice call and I answered. But then I walked up to the bar now to ask my spouse, did you call me? He said, no. And even if I had called you, well, you could stay down there saying the noise and hear, all it, and hear me call you. And I said, yes, you're right. So I went back down there, Bridget, and I started jigging up again. And whilst I was there jigging up, the voice came again, Dean, you do not belong here. Now them time, them afraid now. And the same, we start part the crowd because the truth in a clubhouse. Maybe you all don't know clubhouse, but in a clubhouse, dark, very dark and noisy. And so I have to be parting my way now to get back through all of these dark people dancing. And I went back to the bar and I said to my spouse, I have to go home now. And I said, no, I'm not ready. He said, all right, I'll wait for you outside. And so I went outside. And of course, the long and short of the story, we left when he came and we went home. But I want to put this out there that there's something special about me. But God knows my heart. And as a prodigal, he knows that I love him. And so he had to come where I was to say to me, what a loving God, what a merciful God. He had to come where I was to say to me, you don't belong here, sir. And on a Friday night, you're jigging up and going on. And so, as I said, nothing special about me. But guess what? God is a merciful, loving savior. And Amen. he knows our hearts. He knows our hearts, brethren. And he knows what it is that he needs to do for us. So if, even if he has to come pluck us out of wherever we are, where we're not bringing honor and glory to his name, he will do that. And I'm thanking God every day that he actually did that. Because who knows what would have become of me. Here I am today. I wish I could say after that experience, I just lived a perfect, pure life. But it's not true. But I had my hills and my valleys and my baptism and my rebaptism and the whole works. But God has been good to me. And it has helped me to understand that God is real. Very, very real. God is not shadow of anybody's imagination. You now, sometimes when you talk to persons who don't believe, they want you to feel badly that you actually believe in a God. I don't feel badly when anybody, when I talk to anybody about God, because I know the power and might of God. You think the devil was going to call me out of dancer? Huh? You think the devil was going to come call me out of club? No, because that's exactly where he wants me to be. But God in his infinite wisdom and knowing the end from the beginning, decide that that is not where you belong being. And why I feel so, I mean, moved by the whole thing, one of the many reasons I feel so moved is that he didn't call me Yvette. He called me Dean. This is the name that my mother and father called me. So that name is special. He called me Dean. You don't belong here, sir. Come out. You don't belong here. That Praise is powerful, Lord. brethren. That is powerful because God wants us to live the purpose that he has for our life. And so I want to thank God this evening as a prodigal who returns. I want to encourage us, brethren, that we continue to pray because I have no doubt that my mother and father were constantly praying for me. And because they were praying for me, the Lord decided that I need to get this child. She cannot remain in the situation that she is in. And so let us continue to pray for our prodigals because when we talk about prodigals, as I said, we're misusing God's talent. We miss you hear all the things that I tell you I used to do in church. Then here it is how I find myself in club. Doing what? Misusing God's talent, misusing his time, misusing his finances. 
Because you know it costs me to dress up to go club. And so misuse is the, is, is the order of a prodigal's life. And so I want to encourage us to continue to pray for our prodigals. Many of our children are prodigals. Let us continue to pray for them because it's very important that we keep the prayer line open and going so that our children will not be lost because God hears and he answers prayer. And that is what we've been talking about all week. And that's what we are talking about today. And so yeah. Sister Angela Johnson, she's going to be singing again for us. And then we are going to have Brother Stephen Williams who will be praying for the prodigals. All right, so Sister Johnson will be praying for us, Sister Angelia, and then Brother Stephen Williams will be praying for us.
um, Sister Green, thank you very much for sharing with us your testimony and the prodigal son. If you may permit me to talk about the second prodigal son. The second prodigal son didn't think about the resources that was right at home available for him. God had rich resources for all of us. And sometimes we block our mind and our thoughts from it. This evening, as I go into this prayer, I'm going to allow each person to reflect that at some time, we have been one of the prodigal son, either the one who have left home or the one who is at home, but is blind to the availability of all heaven's resources to take care of our needs. Let us acknowledge which one we are and let us ask God to give us the will and the strength to make good use of the resources that he has available for us. When we reject God's resources, we are wasting it also. So I invite us to just think about which one we might have been at some time in our lives and allow God to lead us home because his blessings are unlimited for our lives. Let us pray. Kind yeah. loving Father, you are indeed a merciful and a compassionate God. Yeah. You love us to the end. And you as the testimony shared by Sister Green wherever we have wandered from you because of how much you love and care for us, mm -hmm. you will reach down in the midst of the den of noise. You will call us by name that there can be no mistake. The prodigal son who wandered truly has wasted all that was given to him. But many of us are like the prodigal son who is at home and doesn't recognize the rich blessing, doesn't recognize how you are calling us to make good use of the resources that are available. Oh God, this evening I ask that you will open our eyes, our spiritual eyes. May we discern the gifts that you have given to us. May we discern the resources that you have given to us. And even though, oh God, you're willing to forgive and to restore unto us what we have lost, what we have wasted. Yeah. I thank you, oh God, that <clears throat> you're promising your words that you will never leave us nor yeah. forsake us. Those who have wandered and are not recognizing that they are out in sin this evening, oh God, call them by name. There are yes. so many families here who are praying for husband, for wife, for sons, for daughters, niece, nephew, brother or sister who has wandered away from you. This evening we join with them in asking you, oh God, to call them, keep building them, keep moving up on their, their hearts, and that soon and very soon they will return home. Once again, we are reminded that those who are at home but are still wandering spiritually away from you, this evening, oh God, call us by name. As we hear yes. your voice, oh God, give us an obedient heart to respond to your call. The signs around us are screaming loudly that the time is at hand. Mm -hmm. The signs around us are as bright as the sun is that your coming is the door. Open our eyes and our hearts, O oh God, and may we surrender our all to you. What yeah. a merciful God we serve. What yeah. a compassionate God we serve. What a yeah. forgiving God we serve. We yeah. thank you, O oh God, for who you are. And yeah. as you call us by our name, yeah. may we respond that they may be rejoicing in heaven yeah. over one sinner was returned. Thank Amen. you, oh God, for hearing. Thank you for answering Amen. our prayers. In Jesus' yes. name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen indeed. And brethren, we need to keep praying for our prodigals because they need to arise and go to their father because he's always there waiting to receive us. In fact, he's tracking us down somewhere in the Bible. It talks about the hound of heaven. And when it talks about the hound of heaven, we're talking about God himself tracking us down. He's not forcing us, but he's tracking us down for us to know that he's interested in us and he wants us to turn around and face him. And so let us not quit praying for our prodigals, whether they be children, wives, husbands, or any other relatives. Let's continue to pray for them because God does hear and answer prayer. All right, I'm certain that it's coming down to Vesper time. 
And we're going to be having Sister Alder doing when he reached down his hands for me. And then I was asked to just go into Vesper. So Sister Alder, you will do when you reach down in his hands for me. And then I will just um, segue into the Vesper thought. Okay. Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way, and was wretched and blind as the bee. But my Savior in love gave me peace from above. He reached down his hands for me. When he reached down his hands for me, Jesus reached down his hands for me. I was lost and I Without God or his son, when he reached down his hands for me, I was there in despair, and he came to me there. And he told me that I could be free. Then he lifted my feet, gave me glory complete. And he reached down his hands for me. He reached down his hands for me. Jesus reached down his hands for me. I was lost and undone without God or his son. When he reached down his hands for me, I was lost and undone. When Jesus reached down his hands for me, I was lost and undone. Without God or His Son, and He reached out His hands for me. I was lost and undone without God or His Son, and He reached. Down his hands for me. Amen. Amen. Amen, sister. When he reached down his hand for us, God has done that for every single one of us. We didn't come to him on our own because the word of God tells us that God is the one who draws all men to himself. So God has reached down his hands for all of us. Let's just have a word of prayer and then I will share the Vesper thought after which Sister Angela Johnson will do a song and then we'll close off with prayer with, from Sister Sonia Gray. So I'm going to be praying, share the Vesper thought then Sister Angela Johnson will do a song and then the closing prayer will be done by Sister Sonia Gray. Let us pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father and King, we thank you so much, Lord, that we could have sat for a little while and we could talk with each other. We could listen to songs and we could share in the testimony that I shared, Lord, because it has always caused me to be very emotional. But Lord, I thank you so much that I was able to share. And I ask mighty God that as we continue 
and to help us to know that you are God and with you all things are possible. Help us to trust you because you have always reached down your hand for your people. It is us who brush your hand aside and walk away. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So we've been looking at yet. I will trust him. And so, you know, brethren, many times, you know, we contemplate a lot of things, but we need to contemplate too why it is that we need to trust God. Now, many times we question why God would allow certain things to happen. And we're humans. So we do that. We question why God would allow certain things to happen. And so our questions and our desires for answers come from us as human beings because our vision is limited. And we are now seeing through a, a glass darkly. But the word of God promises that face to face, we shall know even as also Christ is known. God will make things clear for us according to the word of God. I'm going to make a few statements and I invite you to raise your hand if you agree. All right, so you can raise your hand if you agree with these statements. God is our creator. If you agree, raise your hand. Good. You should see everybody hands raised. Mankind has fallen because of sin and the wages of sin is death. Raise your hand if you agree with that. We, Jesus, Jesus Christ came and gave his life to redeem us, to pay the price so that we would not have to face eternal death. Do we agree? Salvation is free to whosoever will accept. Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit as another comforter. Jesus will return for those who are saved. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God is love. Now, those are just 10 items. We could go on and on with a number of things from the word of God to test to see whether or not we agree. But the truth is, if we are able to say that we agree to all of that, then we should be able to proclaim, yet I will trust him because we know all of what we just said we agree with. So we should be able to say, amidst all of what is happening in our lives, yet I will trust him because we just agree to all of those things above and many more could be said. We agree that God is love and we agree that he's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. So if we can agree to all of that, brethren, then we should really be able to say, regardless of what comes into our lives, we are going to trust him. We should be able to believe that all of these things are, could be considered the blueprint for our Christian experience. They are the blueprint for our Christian experience. And so this afternoon, God in his infinite wisdom, he knows us individually. Doesn't matter what we're thinking, God knows us individually, knows what is best for us individually. And he will allow things to work together for our good. That's what the word of God says. Our disappointments very often are centered on why God who knows all things didn't do something about the problem and the affliction that comes upon us. Many times that's why we're disappointed, you know, because we know that God knows everything and we're arguing. And if God knows everything, why didn't he prevent? Why didn't he do something about? And many times we become discouraged or we become disappointed because we're expecting that God should act a particular way. So are you wondering if God is to be trusted? Are you still at that place where you're wondering if God is to be trusted? because you did not receive the specific answer to your longing desire? Has your faith in God diminished because you can't see his hand? Then be encouraged that if God sees its power which falls to the ground, he sees you. If he can see a spur that is so tiny, he sees you, brethren, and that means that you can trust his heart. You can trust his will for your life because the, 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 the sparrow is no more important than you and I, and he sees the sparrow. Now, the pen of inspiration in Review and Herald 1967 says that one of the greatest 
and most comprehensive promises of the Bible is Romans 8, verse 28. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. But she goes on to say, yet of hundreds of precious promises, this one is perhaps the hardest to believe. The individual whose faith encompasses this text has learned a great truth in life. He walks in fellowship with God. So what she's saying, if in faith we can hold on to this promise and believe fully, then we will trust God to let his will be done in our lives. She goes on to say, let us trust in the Lord. Let us get our eyes off ourselves and the surrounding circumstances. And many times in our brethren, that is what is keeping us down. We have our eyes on ourselves and the surrounding things, the things which are weighing us down. But when we keep our eyes there, we're always going to be having a problem. So she said, let us turn our eyes towards him. Let us turn our eyes towards him. Get them off ourselves. Get them off our circumstances. And turn our eyes towards him. What he has allowed to come to us can and will be for our best interest. Provided we love him and permit him to guide our lives. Right? So it has to be for our best interest. Once we love him, that part is important, you know. Once we love him, the people who just going about their business couldn't care less about God, who doesn't even acknowledge that he is their creator, couldn't care less who he is, then it's not the same. Those of us who love him and permit him to guide our lives, this is where we can trust that anything that comes into our lives is working out for our good. It says, though none of it seem good now, there can and will be good in it if only we relate ourselves properly to it. And it, it's worth pausing there. We have to relate ourselves properly to it. So we can't have certain things coming into our lives, brethren, and we're groaning and we're mourning and we're cussing out God even because some of us cuss out God, right? We can't do that. We can't become so wrapped up in our own selves and what it is that we need and should happen that we forget that God is our creator and he definitely knows what is best for you. And what you're probably seeking now is not to his honor and glory. Because if we remember the story of Lazarus, when Jesus raised Lazarus after four days, he said it was for the honor and glory of God. And so this afternoon, I want to encourage us that look a little closer at this text where it tells us that all things work together for good. And we have to relate ourselves properly to it so that the good that God wants to bring into our lives, we will experience it. She goes on to say, expect good. So when things are happening in our life, expect good. She said, begin to look for it. Look for it, expect it and look for it. There is purpose in all, divine purpose. He has permitted it for our good. He will work it out for our future happiness. We might not see it now, but he's working it out for our future happiness if we love him supremely. And she said, look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith and remember Job and his experience. And of course, we know the story of Job, very powerful. So remember Job and his experience. He had a difficult time, but you see what happened afterwards. Joy cometh in the morning. So that is something that we can rely on. God promises that whatever it is, and as she rightly said, that is one of the most difficult promise to fully believe that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. And we can't um, overlook that one for those who love the Lord. So he has permitted it for good. He will work it out for future happiness if we love him supremely. Look to Jesus, the author and finish of our faith and remember Job and his experience. So brethren, as we reflect upon this um, for this week, I ask that we just continue to lift each other up in prayer. Remember, so many things are happening across the length and breadth of this world. Get into the habit of praying because God inhabits our praises and he cannot act unless we pray. The truth is, brethren, God is seeing everything that is happening, but if his people are so comfortable and contented with what is happening, how will he act? He needs to see us looking at what is happening and knowing, grieving over a soul that is moving away from God, grieving over persons who refuse to listen to the truth, grieving over 
persons who are really going down, as we say, into a Christless grave. He wants us to be grieved by these things so that we can cry out to him. We can seek his help. We can ask him to intervene. And then he can intervene. But if we are just going about and we are lull, lulling ourselves to sleep, then God cannot act. So I encourage us, brethren, as we come to an end of this week of prayer for the young people, that we pray, we spend time praying for many things. I want to thank the church for the early morning prayer sessions. I'm not always there, but when I'm there, I'm thanking God for all of what I hear coming out, those um, things that we're praying for, the sick, all things, because God hears and he answers prayer. And so this is something that we can contemplate for the week. And we can act, not just only contemplate, but act. Because the word of God tells us that we should not only be hearers of the word, but we should be doers also. So we will contemplate this for the week. And we are going to be listening to Sister Angela Johnson ministering to our hearts again. And then Sister Sonia Gray will lead off in the closing prayer.
Let us bow our heads for prayer. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Our Father, our friend, our Savior, our Lord, we thank you for this another opportunity of prayer. Father, we are heartened to know that we can trust you in spite of our griefs, in spite of our pains, in spite of our sorrows, in spite of our afflic afflictions, we can trust you. At times you feel unsure of where to go, what to do. Sometimes you feel unsure of everyone, but we know that we can trust you. Amen. I pray that you will help us to grow in that trust knowing that you know what's best for us. Yeah. As we bring another Sabbath down to its close and we stand on the threshold of a new week, we place our hands in yours, trusting you to guide us, to protect us, trusting you to slay our giants, trusting you to provide for our needs. Amen. Cover us now with your blood and continue to do for us far more than we are able to ask or think. And now to you who are able to keep us from falling, be all honor, glory, majesty, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, sisters. And we're going to. I would like to say thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Sister Shields Green. Thank you. You are welcome. All right, we're going to say meditate. We're going to do our meditation song and then we're going to hand over to the AYS leaders. Okay, go ahead. Is that Savior Breathe and Evening's Blessing? Savior Breathe and Evening's Blessing. Here we go, our spirit thinking. Sin and loss become confessing. Thou can say and thou can seal. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'd like to hand over to the AYS leaders. I am saying thank you all for attending this. A evenings AYS program. I pray you are all blessed. Thank you all for participating, those who share in the chat and those who sing along with us. We look forward to seeing you next week. I pause just a little while longer to express, express a special thank you to Sister Yvette Shields. Just imagine you receive a bouquet, a basket, and many roses. You made us proud today. I felt I was on cloud <laughs> nine going up to heaven. We at the New Haven Church really appreciate Sister Shields. You, are, you not only assisted us in the AY program, but also in the Vesper Thoughts. Thank you, and our hearts are blessed today. Amen, amen. God be praised, sister. God be praised. Amen. I don't know if Pastor, any of the leaders would like to close off, would like to say anything to close off. Sister Green, you surprised me. I didn't know you could jig. <laughs> <laughs> But God is good. God is good. God <laughs> all the times, all the times. God has brought us. A, God has brought us a mighty long way. Amen. As for me, the Lord has brought me a mighty long way, and I can see Amen. that I have. I have company, Sister Shea's grief. We, <laughs> we came. We came a long way. God has been good. I've been Amen. blessed. Amen. From last week until now, in a very special way, profound way, and I was also blessed by your ministry and. All those who shared from morning until yeah. now. Let us keep keeping each other in our prayers. Yeah. As I said this morning, 
that it doesn't matter what we do. Yes. If we don't trust God, then everything is going to fail. And Amen. So a part of our, uh, the, the acronym uh, New Start is trust in God. Trust. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. we do all the other things. We eat the right food. We get the mm -hmm. sunshine. We do our exercise and the fresh air and all of that. But at the end of the day, let us trust God to Amen. see us through. And as Amen. we do so, let us not be presumptuous. Let no. us, by God's grace, do the things that we know are necessary so that God can work with us because he has made us with he has given us a brain, each of us, yeah. rather. And so yes. we must use the brain that God has given to us. We Amen. continue tomorrow morning with our uh, morning blessing, Kine City. Yes. And uh, yes. tomorrow morning we read from the Spirit of Prophecy. And we continue on Sabbath. We're supposed to begin our stewardship week. And uh, we have our Wednesday night service and Sunday night service. May God bless you. I don't know if Ella Pearson, Ella Pearson, you have anything you want to say to the Bridget this time? Yes, Pastor. Does, I too want to con commend the youth yeah. for their part that they have played throughout this youth week of prayer. I believe that yeah. it was a blessing yes. for all of us. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, I must say that today was also a blessing mm -hmm. and um, I want to say thanks again to Sister Yvette um, Shields Green for her contribution and to all those who have contributed to make mm -hmm. this week, the Youth Week mm -hmm. of Prayer, including today, a blessing mm -hmm. for each and every one of us. Just want Amen. to remind us that tomorrow Amen. will be board meeting. Yes, tomorrow will be board meeting, Pastor. And um, this evening around about 730 we'll be having our elders meeting. God bless us all. And we hope that we, let us continue to pray one for the other. God bless. Amen. I see Sister Judith saying that the burial will be Thursday. Um, Sister Judith is talking about some burial. Sister Judith. Yes, I think it's, uh, I'm not remembering the persons. I think it's Angela. Sister Campbell, mother. mother. Mother, right, Angela Campbell's uh, mother. Monica Campbell. Monica Campbell. Monica Campbell. Monica Campbell, rather. Will be there yeah. Thursday at Rosehill, Westmoreland. Yes, and the Zoom link will be out for a person. Okay. No. Uh, okay. Pastor, have you heard anything about Sister Brian's grandson? We'll talk more about that in the board meeting tomorrow. The I think it's the 29th they're looking at. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Pastor, Pastor, good night. Good night, Pastor. The yes, funeral service will be tomorrow at one o'clock. And then the burial will be on Thursday. Oh. For Sister Monica's camera mommy. Okay, okay. All right, all right. The, all right. Thanks for the info. Yes, Pastor. You're welcome. God bless. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Send to you, Sister Green. Blessings, everyone. Love you, church family. Miss you. Yes. Have a good night. You. Bless me. Bless me. Thanks. Same to you, brethren. Same to you. Good night, church family. Love you yeah. all. Bye. Program, Bye. Sister Green. Thank you all for the blessings. Yes. yes. God, yeah, God be praised. God be praised. God be praised. Glory, Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 By the real yes. big man. God is. God is. Amen. 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 Hey. Hey. Michelle. Michelle Sinclair. Michelle Sinclair. This is every. It it fixed now. This is every. I hear you. Thank you.
Yes, nice. Miss Henry, Miss Henry, yes, Miss Henry Claire. No, my microphone was not working, and I wanted to say something. But it's, okay, I started to talk.